What's up, Tejas? I'm here today with Maria Cadena. She is the owner of Seibo, and um, we are here where she has all of her purses. So as you can see, they're behind us. They are beautiful. So thank you for allowing us to come in here and for yeah. chatting with us. Yes, thank you for having me. Of course. Um, so I want to know a little bit about your background. Like how, like what were you doing before you started doing this and how did you get started? Um, okay. tell, us, tell us your story. Okay, um, it's kind of like a long one, but I'm going to try to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I've been doing this for about 10 years. Um, so uh, I moved here about six years ago. And before that, I had a brand actually in Ecuador. So I was already kind of doing the same thing, mm -hmm. but I had a, a bigger team there. Uh, I pretty much just uh, design the bags and and just focus on the creative process. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I got here, I really didn't know what to do <laughs> because we moved here because of my husband's work. Uh -huh. And um, so I figured, why not starting, you know, from zero and just starting a new brand here. Yeah. And but this time I wanted to make something my own and having just a small business and me being the part of the whole process you know making the purses designing it and everything pretty much yeah yeah wow so did you go to school to learn how to do design or no um i actually i studied business and started working in banks and big companies and i didn't like it <laughs> <laughs> So I had this idea, I always had the idea of uh, having my own business mm -hmm. and um, I already knew how, how to sew because my mom, she told me that and mm -hmm. my grandmother um, knew how to sew beautifully, like um, she was the best seamstress I ever known <laughs> and um, so I had, I had that knowledge and uh, I traveled once to Argentina and I love, uh, I saw this marketplace that they have with uh, a lot of artisans and makers and I don't know, that just made me so happy and I thought I can do this. Yeah. So that's when I started, you know, creating the brand in Ecuador and um, it was uh, the dynamic there, it was a little bit different because it was a bigger business. Mm -hmm. but. Um, I loved it. I loved it and I quit my job and just started that from zero. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I feel like um, a lot of people, they're like not happy with their jobs and they decide yeah. to pursue their passion, especially like yes. recently being stuck at home for a lot oh, of people made yes. them really start thinking about yes, that. Yes, exactly. So. Yeah, and I, I mean, I was very lucky back then because I had the support of my dad and my mom. So yeah, it was still scary because, yeah. you know, Moving from the security of having a paycheck every month to pretty much no knowing if the people are gonna like the things that you're doing. Yeah. So, but I was I was very sure about it, and yeah. I knew that that is what I wanted to do because yeah. I was not happy doing you know other yeah. kind of job. Yeah. Yeah. And I can tell like just by how colorful it is too, like oh, yes. why you would get so happy <laughs> yes. like. Yeah. So, yes. <laughs> um, can we explore a little bit about your products? Like, I know that you obviously have handbags, um, and I see like a couple of other things. So, what exactly do you sell? Um, are your handbags made from leather, or what materials do you okay. use? Uh, so, I'm vegan, so I decided to make my products vegan <laughs> and not use animal leathers. Instead of, I use. Uh, Recently, I started working with a material called Pinatex, mm -hmm. which is made from pineapple leaves oh, wow. uh, fiber. So um, that is really cool and, and it's very eco-friendly and it also gives uh, the, uh, the people that produce the, the, the pineapples, mm -hmm. gives them like an extra income. Right, this. right. Um, I also started to work with this material, which is actually made from cactus. Oh, wow. Yes. So 
recently there there are more uh, range of materials uh, coming from plants that you can you know actually use. Yeah. Uh, at the beginning, I started using uh, polyurethane, mm -hmm. uh, which is a great option, you know, from if you if you don't want to use leather. Mm -hmm. But at the end, it's made from oil. Right. So. I try to make, make that transition to more eco-friendly and sustainable yeah. products. Yeah. Yeah. So That's so awesome. It's been about two years since I did that. Oh, yeah. wow. And so do you just have handbags or like, I know these look like little makeup cases and like little wallets. Yeah. Actually, you can use it. Like I try to create, when I create a product, to use it like as many ways possible. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, for example, you can use this as a makeup bag or as a clutch. Yeah. It also comes with a, a shoulder a strap. strap, so you can use it as a shoulder bag. And it's the same pretty much with all my handbags. Yeah. I also make uh, small accessories like wallets, like uh, passport covers. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, and I try to do a little bit of everything <laughs> yeah. as much as I can. <laughs> so do you do any like custom orders? I do when um, pretty much the whole year until September. Okay. Because uh, that is when it gets easiest, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and I just can't do custom orders. <laughs> yeah. it, takes me, it takes me way longer because I yeah. have to make the sample and then, yes, so it's, it's, it's a longer process. So I only took custom orders from January to September. Yeah, and what are the price ranges of your um, products? Okay, so they go from 50 to almost 200. Okay. It depends on the material, basically. Yeah, yes. yeah. And the time that I put, you know, in every item. Right, yeah. right. And then the pineapple leaves, where do you get them from? So the company, it's from London. Okay. But the actual pineapple crops are <laughs> from the Philippines. Okay. So they work together uh -huh. uh, with uh, the, this farming community and they made part of the process. I know they do in the Philippines, but then the finished product goes to London. And okay. Yeah, yeah. There's where it gets. Oh, that's I awesome. get, you know. And so I guess this kind of like is a great segue into my next question. And it's about like joining forces with others. How exactly do you find like your vendors to buy from? They usually um, contact me through Instagram. Oh, wow. Yes, uh, that is my main kind of like source of, you know, vendors and retailers. And um, yeah, that's pretty much, uh, I get some uh, from my website, but mm -hmm. mostly it's just from Instagram. Yeah. yeah. And so where can you find all of your products at? Is it at just, my website. just on your website? So you're not uh, at any like... Um, I, I used to be in a lot of like, <laughs> yes, markets, markets yeah. and doing pop-ups and things yeah. like that. But after COVID, you know, that's pretty much... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but um, I'm actually very excited because in, on July I start in, in, in another pop-up uh, that is going to be at the Hamptons in New York. So oh, wow. I'm very excited about that. Yes. Oh, that's yes. awesome. So I'm actually working on the inventory for that, yeah. That's so cool. So you actually go to pop-ups or before COVID, you yes. went to pop-ups like all over yes, the country. All over, yes. <laughs> Did you go like oh, all over the world or just the country? No, just, um, yeah, just pretty much in the U.S. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that's yes. so awesome. So where do you find that you get the majority of your customers from? Like what uh, states? Since I did a uh, pop-up in New York, I, it, it was, I mean, it was awesome for me, like getting orders from, from there. I was there for about three months. So I have a lot of customers in New York and obviously here in Texas. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's so great. Yeah. Um, and then what would you say, um, like, regarding your attitude? Like, I know that, like you said, coming over here, moving over here from another country and having to start over from yes. scratch. Um, I feel like that was a really big obstacle that you had to overcome. How did you keep a good attitude um, you know, doing that. Yes, I have to say, um, it was a, I mean, it was a big and happy surprise that 
um, I got a lot of support from people that I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. You know, and um, the people here, the community here, the other designers and friends like that that I met through the markets and things like that, that they, they helped me like a lot. Yeah. Like getting to know other people or getting to know new stores that mm -hmm. I could sell my handbags and uh, doing a, lo a lot of markets. So I am really grateful to have that kind of community here. Yeah. I love it. I yeah. really do. Yeah. And um, I, I have to say that it's it's it was a huge surprise for me, but because where I come from, you don't get to see that really. Yeah. So it was really nice to see. To yeah. See that. What would you say would was another obstacle that you might have faced and how you overcame that? Uh, the language. <laughs> <laughs> because I knew, I mean, I, I knew how to speak in English, but I didn't knew the terms for the things that I do. Yeah. You know, like machines and, uh, and the materials yeah. and how to find them. So it was completely different because you, you can find everything here online. Yes versus in Ecuador you have to actually go to the place uh -huh. where they sell things <laughs> yeah so at the beginning I was I was doing that like trying to find the places and <laughs> I couldn't find it really because there wasn't many yeah so um, until I realized okay here is everything online so yeah I have to find it yeah, <laughs> yeah. you were like Amazon <laughs> yeah, exactly or even, <laughs> even outside the US like um, there are a lot of things that you can get very easily that you don't do that like in Ecuador because it's not that easy to get things from outside. Yeah. Like they have a lot of taxes and, yeah. and delays and things like that. So yeah. it was, I think that was my, it took me almost a year to kind of figure out all, where to find things and where, where to find the best materials and things like that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And um, I mean, your English is, really great so <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay and then I want to know like what is the secret to finding the handbag that's right for you okay so um, I think I think when you ask a person pretty much it's what they do every day yeah because I seen like I like personally for me I don't like to carry too much things yeah and that it's very clear in my designs because I get sometimes stuck doing the same kind of size bag <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh, that's what I like uh, from markets because I get to you know to talk to the customer yeah and see what they are looking for yeah how what they do and how that affects you know the, the the handbag that they want to carry all yeah. day. So um, sometimes my customers can say, "I love this bag, but I would love it at least if it was bigger." Yeah, or things like that. Yeah, and that also affects my designing process because I can remember, oh, okay, so I need to yeah. design like a bigger bag or or maybe change the handles and things yeah. like that. Yeah, so, um, I think it's very important what you do, you know, every day, what is your, your routine yeah. so you can know exactly what you're looking for. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense because like for me, um, now that I've gone back to my other job that I have, I work in an office and I have my laptop that I carry around with me now yeah. and I need like a bag to carry that. Exactly. But then yeah. I also like my little purse so if I'm going somewhere yeah. I take that out and I can easily yeah. take that little purse with me. And then I also have my makeup bag. So then I have like <laughs> yeah. all those bags inside of that big bag. So yes, yes, I get it. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I love um, making custom orders because uh, that gives my clients, you know, the opportunity to kind of like custom their bag because they like the design, but they would like to change a few things, yeah. the size or the handles, and I can do that, even the color. Yeah. Because um, sometimes in markets they don't find all the colors, so mm -hmm. they they will tell me um, I would like it in black or in white and things like that, so I can do that. And yeah. I do that pretty much 
almost all the year, but yeah. Yeah, wow. Yeah, and I, when I walked in, I was like, oh my gosh, I know who you are because our friend, Jenny and my friend, yeah. she has your bags. And I was just like, you can just tell, you have a certain style yes. that you can tell yeah. when you see it. Yes, so. I, I like it. I like to keep like the shapes very clean and simple. Mm -hmm. I yeah. like to put like way too much, mm -hmm. but I also like to play a lot of, a, a lot of time with color. Yeah. So even if I do, uh, you know, like this is my, one of my classic bags. Mm -hmm. um, I made it like in a very large range of colors mm -hmm. or even mix it up a little. So yeah. yeah, so I like to play with that. Yeah, I love color. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I wanna know a little bit about the story behind your name. Okay, so Savo, when I was kind of like uh, looking for names here for my new brand, um, I wanted something to kind of remind me at home. So Sevo in Ecuador is one of, uh, it's a tree mm -hmm. and it's a huge tree <laughs> that I love. It has this amazing green trunk. So, and I knew, I, I always saw this tree at, at my house in, when I was little. So I, I love the tree. So that was, I, I knew that, that was going to be that name for, yeah. for the brand. Yeah. So it's just kind of like a reminder from home. Oh, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> and you talked a little bit about how your mom and your grandma, they both sewed. Um, and I'm assuming they sewed clothing. Yes. <laughs> um, this is a lot different from clothing. So like, what is the difference um, to make these products? Okay, yeah. So so when I, I, I decided, I pretty much my mom and I decided to start making handbags um, so what I did I did the pattern because I knew how to make patterns by them and um, but I didn't know how to put up you know put together the whole bag yeah <laughs> and we started with a very simple design so it wasn't like a like like this yeah it was very simple and um, we pretty much learn by ourselves like by making a lot of mistakes yeah. <laughs> and le learning from that. Yeah. And learning through videos and from people that maybe knew a little bit because in Ecuador at that time, there wasn't many people actually doing this. So it was, we kind of figured out a way to make our handbags in a very different way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it was, it was a long process like it took me probably like five five years to actually feel like i knew i was doing something good yeah <laughs> yeah and um the machines are completely different like um for sewing clothing you have to use like a flatbed industrial machine mm -hmm. uh which i had because um, you have to kind of like mix between machines yeah. uh, to actually make these kind of handbags. And, um, but I also have a cylinder arm machine that um, it's very useful to, to make very structured handbag, handbags and get into places that are not very easy to get. Yeah. If you have the, you know, the regular flatback, flat type machine. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And, um, what about the story behind like the circles? Like I see that, you know, this is your classic handbag yes. that you have. So why the circle shape? Okay, so I actually started making uh, a square one. So, which is the one on the top. Okay. So um, I like geographic, uh, geometric um, shapes. So um, what I did is, that I have the square, the square bag, and I already have the ring hand, the ring handles, the circle ring handles. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of like looking at that, and then I thought, why not make make a circle one, like make yeah. this kind of like eight number shape. Yeah. Like, and I did a lot of samples before before I actually end up with this yeah. bag because. It is not very easy to make um, 
the circle and then to do the sides. Mm -hmm. um, so it took me a while before figuring yeah. it all out, but yeah, and yeah. I love it, and it's one of my best sellers. Yeah, I was gonna ask you that. What was your yes. best seller? Yes, it's definitely this one. Oh, yeah, awesome. And then I have one more question: um, Are you an artist as well, uh, or is this your art? Your I think this is yeah. Yeah. I mean, I love I love also to paint. Uh -huh. and yeah, I saw a few paintings. That's why. Yes. I asked. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I like to do port portraits. Uh -huh. That's my favorite. Oh. Yeah. Um, and I I've been doing that. Um, I at the beginning I used to paint my my handbags by hand, but it took me so long. Yeah. <laughs> So I just made a few and yeah, yeah, I do. I think I see one over there. Too. Oh yes, yeah, the ones that I did, yeah, at, at the beginning and yeah, but it took me way too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you got to maximize your time. Exactly. <laughs> yes. It got to a point that um, I was getting more and more orders that I just yeah, I just couldn't. Yeah, keep up. yeah. For the right price, yes. she'll make you. A <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we're going to move on to the next part of our interview and what we do is um, we ask you to pick three questions out of this hat and they're usually like Texas trivia or Texas questions. Okay. <laughs> so um, you can pick your first one and read it out loud. What is the capital of Texas? Are you got an easy one? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> what is the most go big or go home thing you can think of? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I think, and I, because I make magic. <laughs> I think uh, I would have to say uh, color. Yeah. Like I know people tend to be like a little bit afraid of color, especially with handbags. I noticed that. Yeah. Um, but I usually go like the brightest, the brighter. Yeah. <laughs> like, like even it, it makes your whole outfit like just pop. Yeah. 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 And I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Can you line dance? Oh. <laughs> no, I don't know what that is. Yeah. Line. Well, I'm not showing you. Jenny can. <laughs> I'm not sorry. <laughs> You're the one that goes out and dances. I have no idea what is that. <laughs> it's just like country dancing, like in a line. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, no, not yet. You'll not yet. you'll learn. <laughs> well, we're we're planning to have an event where we bring a teacher to teach you, so you can come join us. Oh, okay. So, that would yeah. be awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you you and your husband. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for talking to us and sharing a little bit about your story and your beautiful bags. You. And I'm going to make sure that we drop your information down below yeah. so that everybody that's watching this can go and drop the handbag and go and buy, buy one. Yes. So, <laughs> all right. Well, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>
So let us know, again, in the comments, did you eat Freezer Pops when you were a kid? And what's your favorite flavor? And hopefully, you know, y'all knew what Freezer Pops were. I feel like Jimmy just grew up a little deprived. But anyway, that's the story. Y'all have fun eating your freezer pops. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Till next time. That's all, y'all.